In April 2004, the lads of the Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment got caught up in the biggest scrap for British troops since the 1950s. They were stationed in the city of Alamara, 100 miles to the south of Baghdad. Their mission was to bring peace and security to the province. The main battle group, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Matt Mayer, was based in Camp Abu Naji, five miles southwest of the city. But Y Company, under Major Justin Featherstone, was moved into the Dragon's Den, downtown Alamara. The lads of Y Company moved into their new base, Simic House. Nestled in a bend on the Tigris, the other side of town from Abu Naji, the compound used to be the governor's palace. That's definitely so major. Initially, when we, we, the, the boys first arrived, they thought they'd arrived in the seventh heaven. Well, all right, that's one of the main accommodation now. So, follow me. Why Company sniper Adam Summers took a video camera with him to Iraq. He kept a diary to show his family what life was like in Simic House. Gardens, and uh, this, uh, this place here was... 2004, 1st Battalion, the Princess of Wales's Royal Regiment, are in Alamara, Iraq. They're meant to be on a peacekeeping mission, but for the next four months, they're going to be surrounded, cut off, and under siege. Welcome to Alamara. The previous year, ordinary Iraqis cheered British troops. They were happy to see Saddam gone. But 2004 was different. 2004 was a year of vicious uprisings. Moqtada al sadr a Shia cleric, ordered his Mahdi army to throw US troops out of Najaf. The uprisings spread like wildfire across the country. In Awamara, British patrols could feel trouble brewing. When the lads from the PWRR sniper platoon took their turn on patrol, things turned ugly. We come under our first contact uh, which was on the 18th of April, and that was our first actual foot patrol, um, and it was a, a familiarisation patrol. We'd go around the city, um, know the hot spots, uh, the certain da danger areas, and get a feel for the ground and, and the feel for the way of life out there. Sergeant Mills uh, that day was uh, patrolling down quite near to the office of the, the Marsada, and some of the locals were getting agitated. Danny Mills' patrol didn't realise it at the time, but they had parked up outside the local office of militant Shia cleric Muqtada al Sada. Not a good idea. One of the lads on the top of the, one of the vehicles saw weapons being poked out the window, and literally as soon as we'd seen those, a grenade come flying over the wall, sort of like hit, hit Daz on the, on, the, on the breastplate, you know, and bounced under his vehicle, and then, and then it went off. Next thing I'll see is Daz, you know, come running towards me, limping, you know. And I was just getting to the back of the vehicle when the grenade went off. And there's a certain sense here that's like, is this really happening? And I don't know why, but the guys that were doing top cover for me at the time, not one of them returned any round. Danny took out one of the guys and then just said to us, right, rapid fire. And then, and then that was it. And he was in a, a full-blown contact. Danny's second in command was still lying wounded in full view of the enemy. The boys of Sniper Platoon had to get him to safety fast. Run over there under fire and grab Daz, you know, by the scruff and dragged him back over to my vehicle out and then we all got in cover out of view. The firefight lasted for over three hours. Eventually a team of Land Rover snatches and warrior fighting vehicles fought their way through to Danny's men. The lads bugged out back to the safety of Simic House. The lads had only been in Simic House for a day or two and already they knew they'd had to fight to keep a British presence in the city. The firefight marked the beginning of a new deadly phase of the conflict. The net closed around Simic House as Māori Army fighters surrounded the compound. Massive incoming. 
Y Company was now completely cut off from the rest of the battle group in Camp Abu Naji. The siege of Simic House had begun. In the water. My mission changed and became to deny Simic House and the Pink Palace to the enemy. And it was as simple as that. Y Company were holed up in Simic House all that spring and summer. An uneasy ceasefire was called in June. But if the lads thought that was it, they would have been very wrong. On the 5th of August, tensions between Al Sadr and US Marines at the shrine of Iman Ali in Najaf exploded again. Today's violence reignites the old fears of a Shiite rebellion across southern Iraq. The Shiite ceasefire is over. Andrea Catherwood, ITV News. The 135 defenders could only watch as a massive militia gathered outside Simic House for a second time. By 7 p.m. that night, the road to Abu Naji had been cut off by 500 Mahdi fighters. The second uprising was underway. Simic House was a cage with the Tigers of Y Company trapped inside. It seemed like the whole city had turned against the PWRR.